3, 2025, the Democratic Republic of Congo flipped a switch. Congolese authorities announced a four-month ban on cobalt exports in February this year in a bid to regain control over prices and stabilize the market. And Europe's entire electric vehicle industry just realized they're dead. Here's what nobody saw coming. Everyone listening to us right now uh, cannot function for 24 hours without cobalt. And as you noted in your remarks, roughly three fourths of the world's supply comes from the Congo. And the DRC controls 70% of the world's cobalt production. They hold 51% of all known reserves, $24 trillion worth of minerals sitting in the ground. And in February 2025, they banned all cobalt exports, just stopped them completely. No warning. No negotiation, just a four-month freeze that turned into eight months. And when they finally reopened exports in October, they slapped on quotas so tight that Europe's EV manufacturers are now facing assembly line shutdowns. Volkswagen, BMW, Stellantis, they're all scrambling because without cobalt, their batteries don't work. And without batteries, their electric vehicle revolution is over. So let me show you exactly how the DRC just weaponized the one mineral that powers the entire green energy transition, why Europe is completely helpless, and how China saw this coming years ago while the West slept. Here's what most people don't understand about cobalt. Every single lithium-ion battery needs it. Your phone has 5 to 20 grams. Your laptop has more. But an electric vehicle anywhere from 4 to 30 kilograms per car, depending on the battery type. And there's no easy substitute. You can reduce cobalt content, sure, but you can't eliminate it completely without the battery structure breaking down. Below 5%, the whole thing stops working. That's not a preference, that's chemistry. Europe bet everything on electric vehicles. The EU voted to ban all new gasoline and diesel car sales by 2035. That means every single vehicle sold in Europe must be electric. Volkswagen alone planned to produce 1.5 million EVs annually by 2025. BMW, Mercedes, Stellantis, Renault, everyone went all in on electrification. They built massive battery factories. They retooled assembly lines. They committed hundreds of billions of euros to the transition. But nobody secured the cobalt supply. They just assumed it would always be there because for decades, it was. The DRC has been the world's cobalt supplier since forever. You pay, they mine, it ships. Simple, except that system just ended. In February 2025, cobalt prices had crashed to a nine-year low, around $10 per pound. The DRC was producing over 220,000 tons annually, but prices kept falling because of oversupply. Miners were losing money. The government was watching its most valuable resource get sold for nothing. And artisanal miners, the people digging by hand, were barely surviving. So the government made a decision. Patrick Maie Katembui, a member of the National Assembly, announced a four-month export ban on all cobalt. The goal? Stabilize prices, force refiners to pay more, and push for more domestic processing instead of just shipping raw materials to China. The ban was supposed to last until June. It got extended to October. Eight full months of zero cobalt exports from the country that supplies 70% of global production. And when exports finally resumed on October 16th, they came with quotas, tight quotas. For the rest of 2025, only 18 now 125 tons are permitted for export. For 2026 and 2027, annual quotas of 96,600 tons. That's less than half of what the DRC produced in 2024. Let me put that in perspective. China imported over 188,000 tons of cobalt intermediates in 2024. The DRC alone exported about 68,000 tons in just the last four months of 2024 to China. Now suddenly, Total global exports from the DRC are capped at 9,600 tons per year. That's a massive supply crunch hitting the entire industry at once. And here's where Europe gets destroyed. European automakers historically focused on NMC batteries nickel manganese cobalt chemistry. These batteries need significant cobalt content. China, meanwhile, shifted heavily to LFP batteries lithium iron phosphate. Those use zero cobalt? While Europe bet on cobalt-heavy batteries, China built an entire industry around cobalt-free technology. So when the DRC export ban hit, China was partially insulated. 
they still need cobalt for premium vehicles and international markets, but domestically, they can produce millions of EVs without touching cobalt. Europe can't. European battery factories are tooled for NMC chemistry. Switching to LFP requires completely retooling production lines, new supply contracts, new testing, new certifications. That takes years and billions of euros, and it gets worse. Even the cobalt that is available now costs way more. After the ban was announced, prices spiked. By September 2024, cobalt was trading significantly higher than the February lows. European battery makers suddenly face exploding input costs at exactly the moment their automaker customers are struggling with sales. Because here's the other problem. European EV sales are slowing. Consumers are hesitating because of high prices, range anxiety and charging infrastructure gaps. Governments are cutting subsidies. The market is cooling off. And now battery costs are going up because of cobalt scarcity. That makes EVs even more expensive, which slows sales further. It's a death spiral. Meanwhile, China controls 80% of global cobalt refining capacity. Even cobalt mined in the DRC gets shipped to China for processing. So China sits at the choke point of the entire supply chain. They process the raw materials, manufacture the batteries, and produce the vehicles. Europe does none of that at scale. This is why Chinese companies saw the DRC export ban coming and prepared. Back in 2016, China molybdenum, a state-backed company bought the tank fungarum mine in the DRC from the American company Freeport MC Mo Ran. Today, CMOC is the world's largest cobalt producer. They produced 114, 165 tons in 2024 alone, more than doubling their 2023 output. Chinese companies control about 60% of global cobalt reserves through mining operations and long-term contracts. They locked up supply years ago when cobalt was cheap and nobody else was paying attention. Now they control the mines, the refining, and the battery production. Europe controls nothing. And the DRC export quotas are allocated based on historical production volumes. Guess who has the biggest historical volumes? Chinese companies. So when the DRC hands out export permits, Chinese producers get the largest allocations. European companies get scraps. Let's talk about what this means practically. In October 2025, the European Automobile Manufacturers Association issued a warning. Assembly line stoppages are imminent, not hypothetical, imminent. They surveyed members and found companies already burning through reserve stocks of critical materials. Once those reserves run out, production stops. Volkswagen, Europe's largest automaker, has committed to producing 80% electric vehicles by 2030. That's millions of cars annually. Each one needs cobalt. Where's it coming from? Stellantis, owner of Peugeot, Fiat, Chrysler, Jeep, they're building massive battery capacity in Europe through joint ventures. But batteries without cobalt are useless. BMW's new class platform, launching in 2025, is all electric. They've invested billions. Mercedes is going all electric by 2030 in markets where conditions allow. These aren't small bets. These are existential commitments, and they all depend on cobalt supply that just got cut in half. China's BYD, meanwhile, is eating everyone's lunch. They're now the world's largest EV manufacturer. They produce LFP batteries in-house. They don't need DRC cobalt for most of their lineup. And they're expanding into Europe aggressively, building factories in Hungary and Spain. While European automakers struggle with supply chains, BYD just keeps growing. Here's the timeline of how this plays out. 2025 to 2000, 2026, European automakers burn through stockpiles and scramble for alternative supplies. Some production lines slow or stop temporarily. Battery costs surge. EV prices go up. Sales slow further. 2026 to 2027, the cobalt shortage becomes structural. Even with new mines opening elsewhere, they can't replace DRC volumes fast enough. Indonesia is ramping up cobalt production, but it's integrated with Chinese investment. Australia and Canada have potential, but mine development takes 10 to 20 years. 2027 to 2030, European automakers either switch to LFP batteries, which means abandoning their NMC investments and competing directly with China on technology, where China has a decade head start, 
or they pay premium prices for limited cobalt supplies and watch their margins collapse. Either way, they lose. Some companies try recycling. By 2040, recycling could theoretically provide up to 51% of cobalt demand, but that's 2040. Right now, in 2025, there aren't enough old EV batteries to recycle. The first big wave of EVs only hit the market in the late 2010s. Those batteries last 8 to 10 years minimum. Mass recycling doesn't become viable until the early 2030s at the earliest, so Europe is stuck. They can't get enough cobalt. They can't switch battery chemistry quickly. They can't compete with China on cost. And their own consumers are already hesitant about EVs. This is a perfect storm that destroys the entire industry's competitiveness. And here's the geopolitical angle that makes this even worse. The DRC didn't just randomly decide to restrict exports. They watched what happened with Russia. They saw Western countries freeze $300 billion in Russian reserves. They saw China get targeted with export controls on chips and technology. They learned the lesson. Whoever controls critical resources has power. So the DRC created ARICOMS the authority for the regulation and control of strategic mineral substances markets. This agency now controls all cobalt exports. Ilicitoris Quartus. They allocate permits. They decide who gets supply and who doesn't. It's resource nationalism at the most strategic level. And they're not alone. Zimbabwe banned unprocessed lithium exports in 2022. Namibia did the same in 2023. Indonesia restricted nickel exports. Malawi announced a ban on all raw mineral exports in October 2025. Across Africa, resource-rich countries are watching the DRC and taking notes. Why ship raw materials abroad and stay poor when you can force processing domestically and capture more value? For Europe, this is a nightmare. They don't just need cobalt, they need lithium, nickel, graphite, manganese, rare earths, all critical battery materials, and all increasingly controlled by countries that don't trust Western intentions anymore. The EU tried to respond. In 2023, they launched the Strategic Partnership Roadmap with the DRC explicitly to secure mineral supplies. They signed similar deals with Zambia, Namibia, and Rwanda. They passed the Critical Raw Materials Act in 2024 to boost domestic production and diversify supply chains, but it's too late. The DRC already acted, the quotas are in place, the damage is done, and European automakers are facing the consequences right now. Meanwhile, the United States is somewhat better positioned. American automakers were slower to commit to electrification, they hedged more. And the US has domestic mining potential in places like Nevada and other Western states. Plus, US trade relationships with Canada, Australia, and Chile provide alternative cobalt sources that Europe doesn't have as easily. But Europe? They went all in on a supply chain they didn't control. And now they're paying the price. Here's my take on where this goes. European EV production will stall over the next two years. Some automakers will pivot to LFP batteries and accept the technology disadvantage versus China. Others will focus on hybrid vehicles which need less cobalt than full EVs. A few might slow their electrification timelines entirely and keep producing combustion vehicles longer in markets that still allow it. Battery manufacturers in Europe like Northvolt are already struggling. Northvolt filed for bankruptcy protection in late 2024. They couldn't compete with Chinese battery prices and now face supply shortages on top of that. More European battery companies will fail or get acquired by Chinese firms. And China wins everything. They control the mines. They control the refining. They control the battery technology. They control the vehicle production. And now they'll increasingly control the European market as Chinese brands like BYD, NIO, and Xpeng expand westward with cheaper, cobalt-free EVs. The DRC's $24 trillion in mineral wealth just became the most powerful leverage in the global economy. And Europe's entire green energy transition just hit a wall made of cobalt scarcity. This is how resource wars get fought in the 21st century, not with armies, with export quotas. If you found this valuable, smash that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you catch the next video on how resource nationalism is reshaping global power. And drop a comment do you think Europe can recover from this cobalt crisis? Or is China's dominance now unstoppable?